Go download my free Legato course right now and learn to play fast in the fastest way possible. It's four core exercises that you need to focus on in order to reach the highest level of mastery. And then I'm going to give you the three sub skills of Legato. Once you master these three little skills, then the overall skill of playing very fast runs using hammer-ons and pull-offs will be very easy. So go sign up right now and get immediate access for free. See you in the course. So let's look a little bit on how to do ascending runs using tapping only, uh, because this is of course a a different discipline than than you know using your pick to to start every string off. When you do a legato technique, uh, then when you go from string to string, you just you know pick that string the first time, and then you let your left hand fingers do the rest. But in this case, we're using the first hand uh, or the first finger to go from string to string. And it's not used to that because it's just, just used to fretting notes and not hammering them on. And this seems unbelievably uh, awkward in the beginning to hammer on notes with the first finger. But once you get a hang of it, and I'm talking just a couple of hours with just, you know, a simple exercise like I'm going to show you in a second, then suddenly if you focus on that first finger tap, you will you really uh, get there very fast. And, it, you know, a couple of days, a week of practicing it, over and over again, and it starts. It starts actually. Fe it feels like it's natural at some point, like you've been doing it forever, because your other fingers have been doing this. Uh, it's very likely that they have anyway. So, so what you do is you simply learn to tap, or you just do it. You just tap with your first finger, tap with the uh, with the tip here, and not this part. You don't want to tap with this flat part of the finger. You want to tap with this because this is hard and much easier to control. But it demands of you more precision. So you have to be really accurate when you hit the string um, to get it just right behind the fret and then with your, the tip of your finger. So that's what, you know. And then of course when you tap the note, you have to move your finger away from the fretboard. When you're just fretting it, it doesn't matter how far you move it. But when you're tapping it, in the beginning, it's a really good idea to, to, to exaggerate uh, that movement there. Um, what we're going to do is to focus on the A blues scale, but we're going to play it as a three note per string blues scale. So we have, instead of having two notes and then three notes, then two, then three, we're just going to lay it out three notes per string, and you can do that with almost any scale. Uh, three notes right there. So you have the A, you have the C in the eighth fret, and the D in the tenth fret. So that's the first shape you have, and you, now you might say, oh, that's stretching, but it's really not that hard. And if this is too much stretching for you, you can just, you know, play, play the same lick in a uh, minor scale where you have three notes per strings. So you might go for a normal uh, minor or diatonic, uh, whatever you want to call that scale, but you, and then and then just learn to play the scale by tapping instead of using this this uh, blue scale here. But the cool thing about this is that we're actually not stretching because we drop that, uh, what we do here is we just imagine that we have six fingers on our hand. That's really the whole foundation, the whole basis of what we're doing here. We just, well, we just go back and say, okay, what if we had six fingers and we could just stretch this finger away from the other? That's the fact. That's what we can do here. And that gives us a ton of options uh, that we can utilize. So um, I place my first finger in the first fret. We're just going to play, play the blue scale up the fretboard here. Then I have my fourth finger in the eighth fret, and then I'm tapping in the tenth on the low E string. So the first thing is, of course, to tap that note with your first finger. And I should say that muting is a, a thing and a skill in and of itself. So in the beginning, it's a good idea to just take a sock or a stocking, just tie it around your neck, 
so you can get some some uh, peace to practice this. And it's a really good idea to do it. You don't have to use it forever, but in the beginning when you're doing this, it's good to have that challenge. Just remove that challenge of the strings going like that. Um, so, also a very good idea to, to practice this without distortion because Stanley Jordan style, so you really have to, you know, focus on getting the notes right. But so fifth, eighth, and tenth on the low E string. Then we go to the A string. We have the sixth, the seventh, and the tenth on that A string. So these are the frets right there. And that is our three note per string. One, two, three. One, two, three. Shape on two strings. And then I'm just repeating that uh, pattern up the fretboard. I'm just starting one octave higher. So we had the A there. We also have an A there, two frets up, two strings down. So in the seventh fret, I can do the same thing. I can do seven, 10, and 12. And then I have that structure, the exact same structure I had on the low E string. I'm playing the same thing now. The same combination of notes, just on the two middle strings, starting from the seventh fret. So that would be 7, 10, and 12 on the D string. And then on the G string, it would be uh, 8, 9, and 12. So you have the same shape, but just on the two middle strings and two uh, frets higher. Then we go th uh, three frets higher up to the B string, and we have the same um, combination of notes here. Do the same thing. So it's 10, 13, and 15th fret, and on a B string, right? And on the high E string, you have the 11th, the 12th, and the 15th. And the exercise in the beginning is just to play this scale up and down. Uh, what you can do is you can start with, with just going back and forth on the two lower strings. So you simply just go six notes up and then six notes down. Hammer on the first, fourth finger, first finger. And then you go to hammer on in the 6th fret, 7th, tap in the 10th, then pull off, and pull off, and then tap down here, next note right on the low E string in the 10th, then pull that off, down to that one, and then pull off, down to the 1st. Now these little pull offs, tapping, pull off to this, pull off to that, are very important, that's the whole point of this, because what often happens is people, or myself included, they they think they go, oh my God, that was all that was almost like you know the the fastest. It almost sounded right, and because it's it's relatively easy to get a result that sounds something like what you want, we mistake it for being easy, which is not. But it's the last you know two centimeters up to the result from you know the first thing is relatively easy to learn, but it's the two millimeters that that or centimeters that really make the whole difference and and those that last little level lies in whether or not you're actually pulling off when you're supposed to pull off or whether you're actually tapping when you're supposed to tap and and you don't want your brain to go over, as I said, or as I talked about, into this mode where you are just fretting the notes instead of tapping <laughs> or pulling off. So you really, in the beginning, have to just study every single thing you do. Tap, tap, effectively, you know, move your fingers out here. Tap it, tap it, tap, tap, or hammer on, and then there, and then pull off pull off, tap, pull off, and pull off. Also, some people say, oh, you can just tap the whole thing. You can just... Like, whatever. I don't know who, who's the... Um, but but that's actually a, a quite a bit harder to just... And it doesn't sound as fluent and as great as, as, as the other, in my perspective, from my perspective. Uh, you might find the technique.